Did you ever wonder why there is a line on our hymn such as Ang Diyos, Ang Bayan, at Ang Tahanan? Well, today in our video presentation, we will witness the story of a man whose life is willing to sacrifice just for the love for his family, country, and God. I'm Christian C. Celestino, your virtual tour guide to the life of a man inspired by hardship, sacrifices, and success. The life of Manuel G. Araul. Manuel Gonzalez Araulio was born on January 1, 1853 at Balayan, Batangas. He was the son of Manuel Felix Araulio and Dolores Fernanda Gonzalez. His elementary education was at the Ateneo Municipal de Manila, the then public elementary school run by the Jesuits. He continued his study under the Dominican tutelage at the Colegio de San Juan de Letran where he obtained a philosophy degree. At the Universidad de Santo Tomas, he first pursued theology and later shifted to law. While a student, he was recognized for his essay, Labor Omnia Vincit, a Latin motto meaning work conquers all. By 1876, his studious effort was rewarded by a licentiate in law from the Universidad de Santo Tomas. The following year, he passed the bar and after a few months went to Spain to gain a doctorate degree at the Universidad Central de Madrid. By 1879, he went back to the Philippines and managed the estate of his father. His return marked the start of a fruitful career in the judicial service. For 10 years, he was the Relator de la Audencia de Manila. He was appointed to other positions such as Abogado Fiscal de Odensia de Manila, Fiscal Odensia Territorial at Cebu, Promotor Fiscal de Benondo, Magistrador Suplenario, and Letrador en la Indencia General de Haciendas of University of Santo Tomas. Such judicial experience caught the eye of the Dominicans and he was offered professorial chair at the Universidad de Santo Tomas. There, for four years, he taught Derecho Mercantil y Haciendas Publica until 1898. With the establishment of the American rule in Manila in 1899, Araulio was appointed Associate Justice of the Supreme Court. Later, he was appointed as Judge of the Court of First Instance, which has the jurisdiction over Tarlac, Pampanga, and Nueva Ecija. He was later transferred to Manila to preside at its court of first instance. His ruling over controversial cases earned him the just judge. In 1913, the Philippine Assembly created a code committee to help them in the revision and creation of the laws in the fields of civil, commercial, penal, and procedural matters. Araulio's name was at the forefront as he chaired over the committee consisting of American and Filipino legal luminaries. It was also in that same year when he was reappointed as Associate Justice of the Supreme Court. On November 1, 1921, he was appointed as Chief Justice and served until his death on July 16, 1924. <laughs> As a product of Manuel G. Arroyo High School, it is important for me to know the history of my school. As we watch this video, let us understand how this school developed into one of the premier schools in Manila. I am Dexter Jan Soriano, your history narrator. And I am Mary Chin Aising Billy, 
also from AP Department as we bring you along the historical part of this celebrated school in District 5 Manila, the Araldo High School. Few schools have as long a historical record as Manuel G. Arroyo High School can rightfully pride itself in. Its history spans for more than a century, and its alumni include some of the best minds the country has ever had. In 1892, a school for girls under the supervision of the Sisters of Charity was established. It was located at the corner of Victoria and Moralia Streets in Intramuros. The building is an impressive restructure made entirely of lumber, except for its concrete pedestals with an inner court, classrooms, a reception hall, and an assembly hall. During the Spanish-American War, it was converted by the Spaniards into a military hospital. After winning the conflict, the Americans turned it back as an educational institution and named it the Manila Grammar School. Later, they changed its name to American High School in the morning and Manila Normal School in the afternoon. These lasted from 1900 to 1905. In 1906, to meet the demand for secondary education from graduates of Manila and Provincial Intermediate Schools, the school was reorganized and renamed Manila High School during the day and Victoria Night School for adult education in the evening. The continuous increase of demand for public high school education caused the establishment of the three new high schools in the north, east, and western districts of Manila. The original Manila High School, still located at Intramuros, was reorganized and named as Manila South High School, serving the students living in the southern districts of Manila. On June 8, 1930, in compliance with the Municipal Ordinance No. 1603, which states that public schools must be named after Filipino Justices of Supreme Court, Manila South High School was renamed Manuel G. Araulio High School in memory of the 3rd Filipino Chief Justice of the Supreme Court during the American period. Before the outbreak of the war, the school acquired two annexes to accommodate the growing number of students. One on Pass Street in Paco Road, the Yanko Annex, and another one in Malate across the church. This setup continued up to the war in 1941. After liberation, Arroyo High School was reorganized not in its old campus which was destroyed during the war but in several Quonset huts located on the campus of Epifanio de los Santos Elementary School in Singalong. In 1947, due to an increase in enrollment, one of the buildings of Hustulukban Elementary School became an annex of Arroyo. Through the war damage fund, the Bordner Building was restored in 1949. The building and its grounds became the new home of Araulio High School. The students from Lukban and Singalong transferred to the new campus while an annex at Mehan Garden was incorporated to Manuel Rojas High School. As enrollments continue to increase, the Sikia Annex at Santa Ana was acquired. In 1950, an administration building with several Quonset huts was constructed along Esaak Peral Street, now the United Nations Avenue. Another annex was put up in 1957 at the Uson Building on San Marcelino Street. A year later, this annex was vacated and the Sikia Annex was declared independent. It came to be called William Moore High School. In January 1962, the Isaac Peral Annex along U N Avenue became the new main building and the Gordner Building was used as an annex for evening vocational classes. Later, the Manila Science High School was established 
with the Boydner Building as its campus. Infrastructure investment was a contributing factor for the continuous growth of the school. Through the years, iconic buildings were constructed such as the original Taft Building whose facade features sunshade elements. Together with the UN, Kalau, and San Marcelino Buildings, these contiguous structures seem to embrace students entering the campus. The circular building can be rarely considered an architectural gem as its style is the only one in all of Manila's public school buildings. The construction of the administrative building, Carino Time, further enhanced the management of the school organization, while the UN building with auditorium also houses the clinics, the guidance, registrar, and property offices. The 15-room science building is the hub of scientific excellence as it has laboratories and equipment for experiments while its rampus shelters physical education classes. Facing Taft Avenue is the four-story TL Evoque HE building where students' skills in manual and technical capabilities and home management skills are developed. Another addition was the six-room music building where melodic sound and lyrical tunes from students and teachers can be heard. The advent of K-12 curriculum ushered another series of facilities improvement and building construction. In 2016, the Strada building was completed, servicing grade 7 and senior high students. The Amadome was lengthened and a covered court was erected in front of the main stage to provide shade and shelter. The legacy buildings such as the UN, Calau, and San Marcelino were refurbished to provide optimum conditions for academic subject classes. Last year, the four-story, eight-classroom, senior high building was completed to cater to more students wanting to be under the aegis of illustrious Manuel G. Arroyo High School. Arroyo High School has gone a long way from a city school to a huge complex with more than 5,000 students coming from Manila and nearby cities and provinces. The effort of the administration, the faculty, the parents, the alumni, the students, and community contributed to make it one of the premier public schools in Manila and in the Philippines. The year 2020 was a defining year for Philippine education. The pandemic has brought forth a slew of challenges that schools must overcome. Proudly, Manuel G. Araulio High School was at the forefront of it as it worked hand-in-hand -hand with government and community to reach out to its learners with the battle cry, No student is to be left behind. With the help of the city government, the school distributed tablets to learners and SIM cards which has 10 gigabyte of data per month. Teachers were given set of laptops, pocket Wi-Fi's, and SIMs. The other stakeholders took part by providing health kits and webinars on various topics such as health and online learning. The following year, 2021, the learning setup was still of a virtual school. Yet, unbeknown to many, the administration was striving to prepare to the eventual return of the students to the physical school. Welcome safely back home was the motivation of our principal, Ms. Maria Eva S. Nacion, in spearheading the completion of four major infrastructure projects. A. In response to DepEd's call for schools to be resilient on weather-related disturbances and calamities, the DRRM office was strategically built near the UN gate and intended to be the nerve center for the school's emergency response team. 
When a calamity happens, it has various equipments such as first aid kit, emergency equipment and tools, communication equipment, COVID protection items, and food and water supplies that can be utilized immediately. B. A clean school is a healthy school. It's not just a saying, but a reality here at the Rowley High School. The past few months were devoted to the rehabilitation of toilets and the construction of seven hand washing facilities in support of comprehensive water, sanitation, and hygiene in schools, or the so called WIN S program. The administration recognizes the important relationship of a safe and healthy school environment to better learning and enhance productivity amongst learners. C. The circular building was successfully refurbished and rehabilitated. Its age and unique design qualify it as a heritage structure among school buildings in the city of Manila. It has gone through several incarnations, from being an ambient canteen to light some classroom for the TLE and PE classes. Today, its adaptive reuse was for it to be a function room and SBM center. And last but definitely not the least, B. The drainage system inside the school campus was improved to prevent flooding during the typhoon season. Currently, the school registrar's office and clinic are under renovation. Construction of isolation room adjacent to the school clinic is also ongoing. A guardhouse was constructed to strengthen on-site security, ensuring the safety of students and school personnel. These successes are worth thanking for, and we must be more enthusiastic as better things are constantly coming.